Good morning, and thank you for joining us for worship on this last Sunday in July. I imagine uh, just about wherever you are today, it's a little warm and perhaps a little humid, And uh, but we come now to this time in which we worship God together, and we do so with uh, joy and, and hope. Uh, would you pray with me now? Gracious and loving God, uh, we just ask now that you would silence within us anything that distracts us from you, anything that turns our hearts and minds away from you, anything that would get in the way of us hearing from you in this time together. May your Holy Spirit rest among us and upon us to guide and direct us, to help us listen well, to help us live well with you and with others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have not already done so, I would like to invite you to pause uh, the video for just a few moments and uh, find your favorite Bible and read Psalm 100 in in that Bible. Uh, A wonderful passage, uh, a wonderful call to worship. Uh, for each one of us, and just invite you to to go and read and just spend a few moments with that uh, passage as we uh, dig a little into God's Word this morning. You wouldn't necessarily think they had much in common, other than the fact that both passages are part of our scriptures, that both are God-breathed and Spirit-inspired. One passage is found in the Psalter, in the Old Testament. The other is found in the New Testament, part of Paul's letter to the churches in Galatia, churches that were struggling. One passage is a hymn of praise, a universal call to worship. The other passage is an instruction that Paul gives near the end of the letter. And yet, these two passages, which would seem to have so little in common, actually have a a thread that runs through each of them. Both of them invite you and I to get out of the way when it comes to our relationships with each other and with God. The word that comes to mind when I read the psalmist's instruction to each one of us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And when I remember Paul's words to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ, and our own struggle to do either one of those two things well, the word that comes to mind for me is self conscious There are all kinds of positives to being self-aware, knowing what we are good at and what we aren't, knowing where we've come from and where we're trying to get to, knowing what we value and what purpose and meaning what we value gives to our lives. Being self-conscious is different from being self-aware. Being self-conscious means that we are thinking too much about what other people think pondering too often the perception others may have of us. There are three primary emotions, says Anna Gotcher, that result from being overly self-conscious. Pride, jealousy, embarrassment. Each of those emotions may get at the heart of why we struggle to bear each other's burdens, why we struggle to make a joyful noise to the Lord. We won't spend a lot of time here because uh, it was part of what we spoke about last week as we finished our study of Galatians. But isn't pride at the heart of why we struggle to bear one another's burdens? In our own pride, we don't want to admit that we are carrying a burden that is more than we can handle. In our pride, we find it difficult to ask for help. The pride of the person we see in the mirror is more important to us 
than the need, the trouble, the struggle that that person is enduring. But even more of a hindrance, perhaps, than our pride, even more of a stumbling block to the worship we want to offer, might be our jealousy and our fear of embarrassment. Some of you will remember when we took a look at a study entitled Holy Roar, in which we examined the seven words that are used over and over in the Psalms to call forth the praise of God from the people of God. One of the things that study encouraged you and I to do was to quit worrying what other people thought and to concern ourselves only with what God thought of our worship, our prayers, our singing, our words, the attitude of our hearts. We were in that study encouraged to raise our hands, to fall to our knees, to lie prostrate on the ground, but most of all, to let loose. And I think all of us, at least to some extent, found it a hard comfort zone to leave. But that's what the psalmist means when Scripture encourages us to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Other translations use the word shout, signifying to us that the praise we are to offer is going to be loud and boisterous and maybe just a little bit out of control. But I know in my own life, and perhaps you know it in yours as well, how jealousy gets in the way of my praise of God. I don't think I can count the number of musicians and vocalists whose gifts for music, whose talent for leading the worship of God, both astonish me and cause me to envy. I remember thinking over and over again in all my time in, in the church how unfair it seems when someone can both play the instrument and sing the melody. I mean, it's great when they can do one or the other, but why do they have to be able to do both? And yet, even as I envy the gift of others, I know in my own heart how I have withheld my own gift, my own praise, certainly held, withheld, an offering of praise to God. I have muted my own voice, tamped down my own enthusiasm, put my hands in my pockets and stilled my tapping feet, not because I was worried about what God thought, but because I was worried about what others thought. My joyful noise might not be on key, but would that make it any less reverent? My clapping hands might miss the beat. My tapping foot might be off rhythm. But that would not make the praise any less an offering to my Savior. What makes it less reverent, what makes it less of an offering, is worrying about embarrassing myself. When I'm supposed to have my heart tuned in to the worship, of God, creator, redeemer, sustainer. One of my favorite worship songs, and it is part of our worship today, is the song, I Stand in Awe. Those words, that song written by Mark Altrog, is such a wonderful testament to what brings you and I to this place today. What brings us to this time of worship today? A God who deserves to be stood in awe of. We stand in awe of the one who spoke and everything that is came into being, continues to come into being. The words God spoke that began this universe continue to reach out to the far corners not even yet created. 
We stand in awe of the one who sent his only son to be the word made flesh to dwell among us, to reveal God to us, to die for us and rise for us, to pray for us, to reign in power for us. We stand in awe of the one who invites us to be participants in the ongoing work of God. The work that began at Pentecost continues today, and you and I are the hands and feet that see that work done by the grace of God. And so I invite you to close your eyes and hear these words. And don't worry, I won't sing them. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. That is what the psalmist envisions in the words of Psalm 100. People standing in awe of God. People shouting their praises, worshiping with gladness, coming into God's presence with singing, entering the gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. And that's what I envision when I suggest to all of us, myself especially included, that to worship God rightly, to worship God in a spirit of grace and truth, you and I might just need to get out of our own way. We might need to quit worrying about what others think. We might need to quit caring about how others will respond. We might need to stop ourselves stopping ourselves from giving the praise we know God deserves, from offering the worship our hearts long to declare. So will you do this with me today? And believe it or not, you can do this without getting out of your chair. But will you do this as I try to do this today? Will you stand in awe of God? Will you stand in awe of the one who makes us, redeems us, sustains us? Will you stand? in awe of God, and will you let that awe be an offering of praise? Amen.